Janome. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Live with Janome. I'm Ann Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist, and today we're talking about cut work. We're going to be doing cut work from start to finish. So let me put the camera on and say a proper hello. Let's see here, take that away. There we are. All right, so welcome. Yes, we're gonna talk about cut work. It's been uh, kind of a hot topic the past couple of weeks, and I wanted to talk about a few things about it. Now I've created a coaster for us using cut work, where we cut the center out of here like that. And we also cut it off the, uh, from the, uh, what do you call it? From, from our uh, stabilizer as well. It's gonna pull it off the machine here. So let me see. Here we go. So you can see, we cut it off there. There you go. All right, so, and I did a special one too. I did one like this. So you can see, um, how I did a cut like that. Now this is, you know, all of the cuts, you need all four blades, but this will go around and do all the sections of each one and then the next one and the next one. I'm not gonna show this one cutting out because it takes a little bit longer to cut this one, but I'm gonna show you how I created that. Um, almost looks like rickrack in there now. So I think that's really pretty. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to, first of all, I wanna talk about cut work uh, and how it works. There are cut work needles and they go in your sewing machine where your um, needle is. So you'll take your thread out. Now, if you have certain machines, when you go to the Genomi Global page, I'm gonna put this up here uh, and maybe I'll, I'll just move them down here a little bit so they're not such in the way. There we go, over here a little bit. So when you go to the Genomi Global page, you under the CM17, you'll see that we have um, cut work designs that you can download. And um, we have the cut work needle information there as well. Now, when you download that, there's a uh, information sheet, there's like a booklet you can print to show you how to use them. Now with those, I'm trying to get my face off of there. There we go. So with those, Genomi gives you a warning and says, these are the machines that you can use the cut work with. And what that means is um, those machines have, um, have something in bed, well, the machines themselves, like when you put your colors in and it says the color number, well, when you, on certain machines, when you have the cut command and it goes to your machine, it'll show you a little, a little needle and it'll tell you, uh, you know, stop your machine, take your thread out, put in this needle, push go, and then it'll do that one, then put the next one. And then when you get all done, um, at the very end of stitching, it'll say, clean your bobbin area. So this is something they've added, and I think it started maybe with the 550. I'd have to go back and look. But you can still use cut work needles, and when you're designing in our Genomi Artistic software, when you go to save that design, uh, you will see a little warning come up that it may not read the design correctly. What it's saying is it's not going to read, your machine won't read and show the actual little needle. It's just going to show a little uh, black, red, blue, or green box with no color number and that will tell you to put in the needle. In the software, you can print out your design, and at the bottom of your design, I'll show you when we go to the print function, you can print out the sequence, and it will say, it'll say color one, and then it might say uh, knife, and it'll be black, and then it'll say knife red, knife blue, knife green. Then it'll say color, what the next color. So that's that would be like the sixth color, so it's considered a color. So you won't see those little, the little, icon but you'll see the little box and if you use your uh printout you know exactly where they go okay and a few weeks ago i did one on the i have a 9850 and i showed on the 9850 the difference that there were weren't the needle the needle little things weren't there so you can use it i just always you know i always let people know uh be cautious watch what's going on on your screen put put your little icon from uh the whole flower to the one petal so you can see what's up next and you'll know what you're doing. And if you, uh, you know, you, I left my bobbin case in, I just took my needle out with my CM17 and some of the other machines that have the icon come up, it automatically turns off your thread sensor as well. 
So if you have a machine that doesn't turn off your in and you can't go to your set mode, some mode, some in the set mode you can turn off the threads thread sensor like the 9850 I could so in those machines go to the set mode turn it off or if you in the olden days what we used to do is just put a slip of paper right where your take up is because the thread sensor is right there so you have to remove your thread but you can put like a little piece of paper in there and so your thread sensor will see something's there and it won't say you know stop machine and re-thread okay and then after you get done, when I get done doing cut work, I do open up my bobbin area, take my bobbin case out, and I give it a nice little brush in there. I never see a lot of dirt. I see more dirt when I do uh, batting and other things in there. But with the cut work, I don't. But, I, you know, just clean it out. It's always good to clean it out. And then, um, you know, you're good to go from there. So let me remove these uh, little notes here. There we go. And I'm going to go into the software first. We're going to create it in the software. And I'll show you the warning because I'll put it in a different hoop so you can see that. And, um, and I'll also, once we're done creating, I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to hoop up my stabilizer. I'm going to get my um, two pieces of cork. Now I'm using, uh, mine are fairly large. So I used a six inch piece of cork, two pieces of cork. And this inner part, I'm going to hold it in close. This is an old embroidery that I had. And I, you know, sometimes when I go to shows, I come home with stitch outs and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. So I just save them and I decided to use them for the inset. So you could use a pretty fabric or you can use, uh, this is another one of those. Uh, this is actually part of another design that I cut away. Um, you can use things like this to make the centers of your uh, coaster. And I have one I'll have ready back there that I'm going to use. So. Let me get uh, the software up and we'll start there. Let's see here, there, and then pop that up. There we go. All right, so let me just move this out of the way. All right, so on here, you can see I have um, the different uh, parts of the design. So I'm gonna start with, uh, so I started with this one here and I made changes all the way up to this one. Same thing here, I started, this is cut work five, let's see three, four, and five. So I made different ones there. So we'll start with this one here. It's basically a shape, but I wanna show you the different parts and talk about them first and then we'll create them. And I'll show you each of them as I change them. So I did create a tack down. I didn't make, use, you can make, use it as a placement as well, but um, originally when I made this, I was going to just cut um, on that line later on. So um, it holds my state, it holds the top of my uh, cork down, and then I'm going to clip it afterwards, and so it won't show at all. So that's what that is. And, I, and since I'm putting it in the center of a hoop, and actually, let me see if I'm in my, let's just change this to uh, a, this, there it goes, that hoop. I know I can just put it in the center and in the center of my hoop and I don't have to worry about um, a placement line. I know where it's gonna go. So I don't, I know, but I could use it. So there it is. So it's gonna hold, I, mean, I have, fat, I have a stabilizer, tear away, and then I have my cork square in there and then it's gonna stitch that. Then the next line is the, um, it's at, and it shows uh, as a, uh, it's not actually bean stitch, the bean stitch comes in here. This is the, what's gonna hold down this edge of the cork while the cut is going to happen over here okay and it's just a run line and then i make another circle and i turn it into a cut work and this one i wanted a running before and then a, a running after and that's the bean gap so what happens and we'll see this in the um, slow redraw is it gives you these two the one of these lines is actually your cut this is your uh, another tack down, this is a cut line, and then it's gonna finish with this uh, bean stitch. And you don't have to have that, I don't use it all the time. And then what's gonna happen is, before I stitch that, let's go back to this, before this bean stitch stitches, I, I'm at the end of my cuts, I'm gonna remove the center, I'm gonna put, take my hoop off, I'm gonna center my uh, fancy embroidery underneath and tape it in place, and then I'm gonna put it carefully on the machine, I'm gonna put back my thread, I'm gonna put my needle back in, 
And I'm going to finish with this pink. And I use the same thread throughout. It's going to stitch this um, part right here, the bean gap. That's going to hold in the fabric, my fancy fabric. Once that stitches, I remove my hoop again and I trim my fabric like about a quarter inch away from those stitches. Next, it's going to stitch this one. And while I have my hoop off and I've trimmed, I'm going to put my other piece of cork wrong sides down, covering the, the, uh, the hole, covering that fabric back there and tape it in place. This one is going to hold the fabric in place and it's the finishing stitch. So it'll show on the back. And, and I do suggest when you get to this one to do needle up, needle down when you start to pull those threads up to the top. It makes it for a neater back. And so that's the last one. And when it's done, I take it out of the hoop and I just trim right here on that, on that stitch line. So that's a simple way, but then, you know, I, I thought of other ways. So that was the first one. And let's see, we're, uh, this is cut work two. Go over here. So this one I decided I could do an inner cut and an outer cut. So again, I have uh, a placement there, which later gets stitched over. And then I have my cut. And this time I'm just I'm just doing a I have the running before, and then um, it does it just does the running before. I don't have that bean gap in there. I've decided I'm going to do it separate. So it does all the cut. I remove the center, I add my fancy piece, I stitch the bean gap, right, because that, yep, I stitch the bean gap, and then I trim, and then I add my fabric to the back, my cork, and this one holds the both together, so this one you want to uh, use your needle up, needle down to pull up your thread to finish it off. And here I added a cut line at the end and I just did running before and the cut on the outside. So now my cutting blades are cutting it out for me. So let's look at that in slow redraw. Let me get over here. There we go. And I'm going to go back to the beginning. So here's that place. Well, my tack down, really. There's a tack down. There's my, uh, run line for my for before my cut there's my cut so these two lines are holding my cork down there's my cut i take out the center i attach my fancy fabric to the back and i tape it in place now i do my decorative stitch i take my hoop off again and trim my fabric a quarter inch away from that and i add my back piece of cork this is going to stitch down the back piece of cork. It stitches right on that placement line I had. And then it's going to have a line out here. This is my run line before. And then it's going to stitch right there next to it. I mean, that, it's going to cut right there next to it. And that's that one. All right. So I have another one. Let me see what I did with this one. So this one had some extra lines in here because there was a big space in here. I think, I don't know where my first one was, but I had a big space in there and I decided to add two lines of stitching in there. This is all the same, just that when you get down here, um, you, can, you can use one of these to uh, attach the front to the back. And then, well, so there's this one here. You could use this one and have two stitch lines on the back would be this one and this, or you could, do this one, then wait, put your backing on, do this one, and then do your cut line. It's all in what you want to do. So this is showing you could put another stitch out in here uh, to uh, make it decorative. So let's create this from scratch so you can see how we create it. And I'm going to show you quickly to this one uh, first, so I, we can, so you'll have this down in your toolbox. So this is actually a star shape that I manipulated. And how I did that is I went to my star tool and I'm just going to move, I'm going to move this out and up a little bit so I can work with the other one. There we go. 
All right, so I'm gonna use my star shape and I'm just going to create a star here. And because I was here last, it put, usually it's probably like six uh, rays there, something like that. Because I was here last and this was probably 60, it will, it will go back to wherever you were. So this is my, where I started, okay? And what I decided to do, I'm gonna select it and go, go to my, there we go. So I can see my uh, start angle and how many rays. So I really, I guessed, you know, 15 rays. I don't know, maybe 20, I, it's up to you. And then what you wanna change is your ray size. That's this number here, not the angle, it's the ray size. And you wanna make it, less let's see here i can't see oh there we go eight it's 80 percent or maybe it's big uh, yeah i guess your numbers go bigger so you want to make it fairly big number because when you finally make this a curve that's what you want to happen so i'm done there and i'm going to delete the inside i have just this outside now I'd like to edit my nodes and make them smooth nodes, but because this is a shape, I can't do anything until I convert it. So I'm gonna go up here to uh, select, and then I'm gonna go to convert, convert to curves. Now I can go back to edit nodes. There's all my nodes. I can select all of them, right click on one and say auto smooth. And then you can see when I click off of it and over here, we have that nice look to it. And then I centered it in here and I just decided how big I wanted to make it for the center of my design. And then, you know me, I always use a line I've used before to make everything else. So I just increase from there. So that's how you would make this, the wiggly uh, zigzag line right here. Okay, so it's up to you. Uh, what you want to use now if i selected that and i went to the star it doesn't see it doesn't give me any rays because i converted it so before you, you have to convert it to get your edit nodes to make those nice curves all right so i'm going to just delete that one and i'm going to close this and i don't i made changes but i don't want to save them because i want my original all right so let's make just our first um cut work design and I'm going to change to the uh, RE20D hoop. Again, I'm gonna start out with a circle and the, my ellipse shape. And if I do uh, shift control command, shift alt, there we go. I can get a perfect circle. I'm gonna make that come to the center by going center to hoop. And I know I wanted, let me look at my outside one. I think I wanted my outside to be, this one is five inches. Let's see what this one, that's that one. This, yep, so they're all, this one here is fi almost five and a half. So I wanted it as big as I could get it in the hoop. So my first one, um, I probably will put here uh, five, let's say 5.4. I want it to be uh, proportional. There we go. And it's in, it's just inside my hoop. I probably could go 5.5, let's see. There we go. Now it's just as big as my hoop. I don't need that inside. So I'm gonna come here to my used colors and delete that one. I just have my outline. So this technically could be my, a placement or a tack down. So it's a run line and I'm actually going to, if it's a run line, I could make the length longer because I don't need it to be so, sh to be tiny. So I can put 3.5 mm and it made it a uh, millimeter. And I'm gonna leave it this color. So the next thing I wanted to do is figure out the inner part. And I wanted this to be about an inch different. So if you go up here and do copy paste and then change your uh, width to an inch. So maybe uh, it's gonna be 4.5 there, or maybe I want it a little less. So let's, maybe I want it 4.0. So let's do 4.0. 
and you can make this any size you want, whatever you wanna leave in here. Once you've done that, change your color because everything needs to be different colors. I'm gonna to go to my Janome colors. I'm gonna make this one pink. So this is my, probably my opening. And I'm gonna start from this one and make all my other lines. So I can go to properties and on my coaster here, when I, I have that, I did that outer, the outer place, outer tack down. And then right away, I did cut work in here. On this one, I added a line here first and then did cut work. It didn't make a difference. So why add another line? So I'm just gonna take this line and I'm going to select cut work. And I want to do a running before. And I can leave this all there. I can offset it. I'm just going to look at my offset because it's minus 0.035. And I, to get that, I'm going to put it in here. Minus 0.035. What I did is I put different numbers in there and till I got what I thought I wanted. And when you zoom in, you can see the space. Okay. So it's going to do the, a run line and then it's going to cut right here and that's fine. We can see that in slow redraw. So let's take a look. And you can see here, here's that outer, my outer tack down. There's the, the inner one, and then it's going to cut just inside that. So this is holding down my fabric well enough to there. So it's just fine. These are my knives. It's going to cut all that. Now that that's done, I'm going to, my middle comes out, right? And I'm going to put down, put my other piece on the back and I need to tack that down. So I can take my cut work line and I could copy and paste it. Let's change the color of it to red. And then when I do that, I want it to be a bit bigger than the cut spot. So let's just make it, uh, let's just say 4.25 like that. And I want to change it from a cut to a run line. And I want to make it a bean stitch. And then I want to make my length, and this might be the right length. I don't know. Let me see. Yeah, it's pretty big. I like, I like 3.5 to 4.0 for my bean stitch. So now I'm, what happened is this is where it cut. So I have a little quarter inch border before it holds down the fabric, which is fine. Okay. And then now I'm going to work on what I'm going to do on the outer part. Let's take a look at it. When we get past that bean stitch, I have this stitch and then my cut line. So this one is going to hold down the backing. All right. So let's go here. And I can use this one here, my outer one. I'm gonna copy and paste it. Rather than duplicate, copy and paste puts it to the bottom of my list so I don't have to worry about moving it. So right now I'm gonna do copy paste. I'm going to come to my colors and I'm gonna make this one green. And I'll go into properties. It's a run line, which is fine. I'm actually gonna make it a, a bean stitch select here, bean, there we go. It's changed my stitch length. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller than the outer part. So it's 5.5. .5. So why don't we just do, uh, I don't know, 5.3. And it's just inside where it's going to cut. And it's gonna cut right out here. So it's gonna leave a little bit of a border when it cuts. All right, so let's take a look at our uh, sequence here. So we can see, and I touched auto to put it at manual. So I have that first tack down. I have my inner cut. I have the uh, bean stitch to hold down my decorative fabric. And then I have my outside one to hold down the backing. And then 
beyond that, I had, oh, I didn't make a cut line. Oh, I'm gonna, I have to use this one to create my cut line, which is gonna be out here. So I'm gonna copy and paste that line. Let me change the color of it to, we'll do this purple. And that's gonna be a cut line. So I'm gonna go out here to cut work. And I don't have to, I think I did. Let me look at where this one was. Did I use? I did a run line before. I don't think I used an offset on my cut. No, I didn't over here. So on this one here, I do, I'm going to do my run line, a run line before, and I'm going to offset my cut by uh, uh, minus 0 0.04 or 0 0.24. So here I want to do a run line and I want to offset my here, my cut by minus 0 0.024. Now, basically what I did is I put a number in and I wanted, I wanted it offset to the inside. So I need a negative number. If I wanted to offset to the outside, I would just put a number. And I just played around with different numbers just to get where I wanted it to be. It doesn't have to be really uh, a big difference. It's just uh, where you want your, I wanted my stitching on the outside because this is holding the inside and this is where it's gonna cut. So let's look at that in our slow redraw now that we have it all together. I'm gonna zoom out. So let's go back. We have the, we have the green, so it's holding the back on now. It's going to finish. And then it's going to do a stitch just on top of my placement because I want it to hold down the back part as well. This placement or the original one is only holding the front. So I want to bring the two layers together. I think there'd be less movement. And then it's going to cut between that line and the green, leaving a little space there. And if you wanted to, let's see if I can get this to zoom. Say you needed to measure, you, want, you wanted to leave a space here, okay? And I can, on this one, I can't see because of the way it's done. But if you wanted this to be a quarter inch, you know, you would need to make this outer line further. But since it was my placement, I already have stitches there. So I wanted to be able to cut those away. So I just want to cut inside that. And it just leaves a little, a little thing. Here, I, need, I wanted a quarter inch, so I know I, I'm a quarter inch away. Here, I'm fine with that little bit of uh, piece. All right, so then you have that. Now, on one of mine, I did, because this is such a wide spot, let me see if I can find. I had a third sample here, too. Not sure where it went. But if you wanted that extra row of stitching, like I show, let's see this one here. Nope, let me go back here and find the extra row here. If you wanted this extra row of stitching, all right, when you're doing, you can add it at any time. You just have to put it in the right order. Okay. So mine is going to do the cut and hold the, that in. This is going to hold the back fabric. This is going to hold, I'm going to stitch this, and then this is going to hold the back fabric. You can have these two show on the back if you want, or you can put them on, put it on after. It doesn't matter. So it's up to you. You can even put a decorative stitch there. If you want another, um, say I want another row of stitching, I'm just going to uh, double copy and paste it. I'm going to change it to Let's change it to this deep red here. And maybe I'm just gonna change it to a, a, I don't know. I don't want anything too busy because it is um, cutting on cork. I mean, sewing on cork. So this, let's make this length, let's make the length uh, 5.0 mm and see what we've got here. What does that look like? I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller then the original let's make it just and sometimes i use the percentage so maybe i'm going to go down to make it 90 percent oh maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger let's make it uh 105 to bring it back up there we go so i have that decorative here 
and then that one. So this one, I didn't change the width. Maybe I want to make the width wider, 3.0 mm. Let's see what happens. There we go. So I have that. It could stitch, I could move this so that it would stitch this first, and then I would put the back on and stitch this. So this doesn't show on the back. So you could do a decorative stitch like that. And then of course you wanna save this as a draw file. And I'm gonna come up here and I am gonna save it first. Do save as, file, save as. I'm in my Cutwork Coaster and I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna name it um, uh, Coaster Deco. There we go. And you can see here it's a draw file. I'm gonna say save. Now, if I was going to put it on a USB stick, uh, let me change this to a, a different machine like the 9850. So we're gonna go here and oh, this one, sorry, and look for the 9850. And I'm gonna use this one, there we go. Now, when I go to put it, let's see if I do it, say if I do file save as, and then I change this to a Jeff and I save it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say SM, so it's different. There's our, there it is. It says design contains cut work while the selected machine does not support it. Saved file may not work correctly within the machine, okay? What you need to do when you go to your machine, I'm gonna select okay. I'm. It's saved. I'm going to go here to my print function. I'm going to select design only. Then, and, and now you can see, you know, all the cut lines. The only thing I need, I always like to put my center lines. And then I want my sequence icons. Those are down here. And when you get down here, this, this is, and I can't zoom this in at the moment. These two are stitches. Here's your, it's going to say knife there, black, blue, red, and green. This is, this is thread. 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 This is, oh, this is not thread. This is knife, 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 and knife. Okay. So you can see if you follow your sequence, you'll know which knives to put in and you'll be all set with that. Okay. So you would print that out. I'm gonna just throw mine over to the printer. And then you'd have that to follow when you're doing your uh, piece. Now I'm gonna take this and put it in uh, my, back to my CM17, cause I'm gonna send it to my machine. And then I will uh, go over to the machine and I'll hoop up my stabilizer and I'll show you how this gets stitched in the hoop. Oops, I'm going in the wrong direction. There we go. And back to that one, come up here. Let's send it wirelessly. I'm going to send it to my ready to sew screen and send. And there it's over there. And you can see that it's, I know it's over there now. Okay. All right. So I'll go over to the machine and we'll get started at that point. So I've gathered all my supplies and I'll go over that list in just a moment. I wanna make sure everything is, there we go, everything is working okay on my end. All right, so I have my stabilizer hooped and I have black stabilizer. I don't have a lot of this, but since my uh, cork is dark, I thought this would be good on there. And it doesn't really show, I mean, it's in there, you can kind of see. But, um, so I have my two pieces of cork so these are six inch squares because that's what I'm working with. You can make yours any size you want. And I'm just trying to unwrinkle it because it uh, has a mind of its own. Um, I have my cut work needles and I'm gonna show you that they come, you can get the uh, cut work needles here like this. And then this is the holder to put them in. I don't necessarily use the holder, but you can. And you can see they have different colors on the tops. That's how you know what to put in your machine. I also printed out, I have my screwdriver, which I'm gonna need, and scissors. This is my sample over here, I'm gonna move those. I also printed out that template I was talking about, and I'm gonna hold up this end of it, because this is where you need to see. 
So this is where we're going to start with this color here. That's the first one. And then um, we're going to move over to the pink color. And then this is the first knife. And let's see if I can hold it so we can see it. There we go. So there's the knife. It's going to do those, the cuts just on the edges. This is where it cuts, it goes across your, your piece. There's the blue ones. There's the red. There's the green. Then we go back to thread and, th and we have thread here. We have thread again, thread again, and then we start again. Knife, 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 and knife. So you know. Now I have a CM17, so on my screen it looks like this. I'm gonna move my camera over so you can see the screen. You see how it shows the, uh, the blades there? That's how um, our newer machines will read it. Let me look at the color list down here. So you can see in the color list, there's where they're all going to go. Now, if you don't have one of the machines that reads your cut file, your cut command, it's not really the needle. It's not, it's not seeing the needle. It doesn't see the needle. Uh, it's reading a command that's digitized into the cut work, whether you're using cut work that you download from the Genomi site or one from one that you create. What you'll see on your screen is instead of those color, you'll see a color box instead of a color number next to it and a name, it'll just be a, uh, a black, a blue, a red, or a green to match up with the, um, your blades. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way. One thing you can do too, if you wanted to remember where you're doing everything, is you could make a note on here. So... This is my tack down. And then this is that first stitch. And then it's gonna cut everything away. And then before it does this part over here, all right, I wanna add my um, fabric to the back. So I can write add fabric. And then it's gonna stitch the fabric. And then I'm gonna go over here and do trim. And then it's going to do a decorative stitch. Let me look on my color chart. It's going to do a decorative stitch, I believe. And um, then I'm going to have a, uh, a add my fabric to the back. And it's going to stitch it down. And then it will have the... Um, The before stitch, before the knife, and then all the knives right there. That's what I'm trying to say. So here, let's see, I'm going to trim my fabric. It's going to do a decorative stitch here. And then after this, let's see, after this, I'm going to add, add the back. And it's going to stitch the back down. This is the run line before, and then you have your cutting. So these two are, are, are run lines. All right. Let's move that out of our way. And I'll double check over here, make sure everything's running good. All right, let's move these. So what I was talking about where that um, decorative stitch goes, here you can see I have both on the back. If I only wanted one of those run stitch lines on the back, before I get to, that's what I was talking about in here, before I get to this one, that's where I want to make sure I put my back on. So I can kind of keep that over here to the side. If I can remember to look at it, that would be great. I'm down on my chair. There we go. All right, so the first thing I need to do is move my stuff off of here so I don't stitch anything in. And then this is going to be secured in the center of my hoop. And I'm just looking uh, you know, I can kind of make a gentle, you know, crease so I can see side to side. Oh yeah, that's going to go right there. And I can eyeball this edge here and that edge so I can center it that way as well. Once it's where I want it, I'm going to put a piece of tape up here. I'm going to use a variegated thread in my top and I have a solid, 
uh, blue in for the back because I don't need my pretty thread on the, I mean, I have embroidery thread on the back, but I don't need my pretty, my really pretty thread on the back. There we go. And I could put a little piece on either side. There you go. All right, that should hold it down. And of course, that first stitch around is going to hold all of this together. So that'll be the first thing I do. And I have my machine set so I can see just the part I'm going to do. This isn't going to show, um, but I, so I don't need to pull the bobbin thread up. I'm just going to hit go. And I try to keep my tape outside the stitch area if I can. Just barely. Yeah, just barely. There we go. This also will give you an idea on the back side where um, you need to place your next piece so that you, the, black, the backing piece, so you know where it's going to fit. And I'm gonna trim this little tail right there. Get that out of the way. All right, so this one is that um, the inner line before it is going to do the start the stitching of the blades. I don't need to pick up my bobbin thread here. This is all going to be on the inside, so I don't need to see it. There we go. I'm just going to trim that off. All right, so this is what my machine shows me. This is because it can read the cut and it's saying change to cut work needle after changing the needle, press the OK key. All right, so, and when I press the OK key, um, I can start the machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thread and my um, needle out. So I'm gonna clip my thread up the top here. I have that new thread stand on that I just love. It has these little, let's see if I can hold this up there, if you can see them. Let's just move this up one. There we go. So up here, I have this little lock, so I can slide it this way, and it holds my thread. So I just have to pick it up there later when I'm ready. So this is for the, this is a nice one for the CM17. All right, let's get that down there so we can see. All right, finish that. So I'm going to take my, use my screwdriver and take my needle out. This is where if you didn't have um, one of the machines that uh, does all the functions, you would need to um, put a piece of paper, you know, right in here and where your take up is. So it will uh, block the sensor and, or you can turn it off in your set mode. So what I do is I have my blades in, I put them in the little lid of this cover. And after I use them, I put them back in here and my needle is right there. So I know when I get done, all my, I'm to my needle again. So I'm just gonna set that over there to the side. I need the black one. These are a little different. These are my original ones. They have the little black down here. The others have the mark up here. They are a flat back, just like your needle. So you're gonna take the flat of it. You can, let me see if we can see it. Each color is a different uh, blade. And when you look on your printout, it shows you the, um, I don't, it's hard to see that this is the, this is the flat side right there. So I'm gonna take that and stick it in here. And you probably can tell I'm having an, uh, a little nail issue today. So I'm not, I have to get them redone. It did not hold up well. All right, so I'm gonna use my screwdriver to put it in. Make sure it's all the way up. Give it one turn. And now I'm gonna to touch OK on my screen. And it goes back to the regular view. I'm gonna make sure these are out of the way. And hit start. And it's just going to do the parts of the, that angle with that knife. And it's going to cross over and do this side. So on the printout, it shows, you know, a line going across. That's just the machine going across. So 
So this is my run line before that is in there now. It's on the other side of the cut, so it's gonna go away. It's stopping, it's telling me to put in the blue bit blade. It locks my machine for me as well. I could just loosen that up. I'm gonna put it in my container. I need my blue one. And I'm gonna put the flat to the back. Now, if you wanted to use the holder, you can do that too. It puts the it puts the needle in the little spot. I'm gonna set okay. And then you can just slide it up there. For me, trying to get it in there, sometimes I, you know, I get in a roll when I'm doing my cut work. I do have my machine set on uh, the fastest speed. It's only going to stitch as fast as it's allowed with that technique. All right, so that's the blue. Now it says red. So I'm going to switch out to the red. Let's see here. There's the red. Stick that up there. I do like to use my screwdriver. I don't want these to fall out. It's going to do the red part. Give you a closer view. All right. Let me zoom back. Hold on there. There we go. Take this one out, put the green one in. Figure out where the where the back is. So it just has two little sections. Finishes. And now it says remove the fabric. So I'm going to I'm going to take this out now so I don't forget. And I am going to put my needle back in. Then I can move a few things out of the way so I can show you removing the fabric. Let's put my needle back up there and tighten this up. There we go. All right. So there I can remove my fabric. Let's get my little guys out of the way here. Over there. All right, I'm going to slide this forward a bit. Lift that up. There we go. So when I lift this up, I can pop this out. Now, sometimes this has a little bit of fiber stuck with it. So it has a little spot right here. It's stuck. And then on, well, maybe one over on this side. Okay. So now that's done. You can see I have the big gaping hole. And I'm going to put my focus fabric under there. I'm going to take this piece away. I'm saving these. I'm going to use these for something. I'm not sure what. I could actually make other coasters and use this for the center and then uh, make a satin stitch to hold it, to hold the two of them together like a patch. So I could do that. That's really a good idea. I may do that. I could put fabric on this side and embroidery on this side and just do a satin stitch around like a patch. Ooh. All right. I got more things to do then. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna take my fabric. Now I have this piece, we did this piece the uh, a little bit ago and I thought this might look nice, remember this? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the fabric down like that. And I'm just gonna figure out, you know, where I like it in that, in the hole. Let's see, I may have to slide it this way. I don't know if I want it a star centered in there. Do I want to be off center like that? A little wonky. 
maybe a little centered. Let me see if I how much of this I'm using. Maybe I could do it. I don't know. Oh, maybe I like all the red stripes. Let me try to get that in there. What am I right in the middle of the fabric now? There we go. Let's go near the edge. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I kind of like that. It's a little on, a little off. There we go. Now this is a really big piece, so I'm not going to turn it over and tape it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this piece up and I have uh, a little clip. I'm going to clip it to my stabilizer there and I'm going to clip this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip it. I'm going to roll it up actually and then clip it here so it doesn't fall in. And that should hold it for me. Same thing here. I'm going to fold this back. I don't want this to get caught on something. You never know. There we go. So I'm just going to clip that. And then I have a little bit on this side here. So I'm just going to carefully fold that back so I can get my piece in here. There we go. It's going to hold right there. Now you can have a piece that you've cut a square of that fits back here. You could do that too. And I could have done that with this piece too, but I decided I would just, hang on a minute. I don't want that in my connector. There we go. It did move a little bit, but I'm still okay with this design. There we go. There we are. Okay. So next it's going to do that stitch around here to hold this down. And on my um, screen, it said remove fabric, which I did. Now I have the under fabric. I need to re-thread and it's asking me move hoop for threading. And what that means is, do I have enough room here for my threader to come down without it bumping here? Or should the machine move to the side? And if I say, okay, it's going to slide like that. It locks my machine. I can come down here with my thread it in there and then touch my threader there we go we are threaded I'm gonna say okay because it's gonna move move it back to that start position now this won't show either when this stitches this is all on the back side so um, the underneath side so I look pretty good here so I am gonna take this and go But I am going to stop it and trim my thread really quick so I don't have this tail that I worry about. All right. There we go. Love those magnets up there. All right, here it goes around. If you feel you need tape along here, you can put tape along there if you want. Pretty much everything I think is staying where it should. I'm going to stop this. I just want to check to see what's... Oh, okay. I know what that is. Okay. Just have a wrinkle there. It's okay. So it's doing a bean stitch. You could do a run line stitch there. You could do any decorative stitch you want on here. You don't have to do uh, what I did. You guys can be very creative doing your own thing. It's going to finish this. And then, of course, this is where I'm going to take the hoop off and trim all this extra fabric because I don't need it in there when I do the next part. Okay. All right, so the next part is my decorative decorative stitch. So I'm gonna take my hoop out, lift up extra high, take out this, and. I I'm just going to carefully flip everything over and lay it back down on the bed of my machine. And you can see I just need to clip around this. So let me get, let me go on this side here. I know it's like, oh, I'm going to cut my embroidery. It's all right. I'll do another one. There, I'm just going to do like a quarter inch away. It's still within that um, area there, but it won't be stitched through again, which I kind of like that it, I think it's going to stay out of the stitching. You can use your duckbill scissors or 
a sharp, nice sharp pair because I'm cutting through this. So this is a great way to use up some of those stitch outs you did that were, you know, okay. Parts of them are good and parts of them might not be good. You can go ahead and use those in place of this. Now I'll probably keep all this little extra stuff because I never know. I might find, I might, you know, pop it into something small. Maybe I'll make a little window in something else and just put a little bit of a star or I can, I don't know. There's always little things I can do with some of my pieces. Sometimes I keep everything and sometimes, you know, it's just too much and I don't. Let's go around here and I'll trim this off this way. There we are. Okay. Now I'm going to do the decorative stitch and not, uh, stitch it through the backing all right through the through the nice uh piece on the back so i'm going to take this this way and i'm going to put it back under here in the right direction that would help there we go and hook it in and it's going to do that decorative stitch around Now I do have a variegated in there. So you're gonna see different colors coming up. And sometimes, you know, I really like variegated and sometimes I don't. This one is rather nice. It's more of a rainbow color. So this is attached with this part here. And now we're just purely doing a decorative and this is what I'm talking about. You want to be careful about what you pick for a decorative so that it's not too, you want, you want to make it longer and wider, which I might do with this. It's a lot of little needle, little needle holes here in my cork, but that's all right. I've done lettering and that's a lot of uh, stuff on there. I mean, you could actually do some lettering in the round here too. That would be really interesting. They don't have to be this big. I just kind of used my one of my uh, water bottle mugs and then a coffee mug to see how big it would be. They could be much smaller. So the next part, I'm going to be taping the back piece on and then stitching and then doing the last cut around. I'm getting some of my tape ready to go as it nears the end. I'm liking it. Here we go, right to the end. Okay, so I want to take this off of here. And I'm going to flip it over carefully again. And this time when I lay this down, I want to make sure I'm covering all, you know, all of that, giving it plenty of room. There we go. And then just putting the tape down. Be careful with your tape because um, when you have tape on here, I don't know why this tape is here. There we go. Put it, maybe I'll cut it in half and put some here. There we go. When you have tape on here, see how this will roll back? That'll just come right off when it's under your machine. And sometimes that causes an issue. I've had that happen. So I'm just careful. And careful, don't press too much. You just want to make sure you've covered that outer edge because it's just going to go a little bit beyond that outer edge. So I got plenty there. How close am I there? Oh, I'm plenty. I got plenty there. Okay. I think I'm good. All right, now it's going to do that stitch that's going to hold everything. This is going to show on the back. So I'm going to do needle down, needle up, and I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread like this. And this is that little bit of bean stitch. Okay. 
I know some of you are saying, oh no, she put her scissors in there. Yes, I should not put my scissors in there when it's running, but it did move away that way. And I knew where it was going, but I run a risk. Anytime you do that, you run a risk. So my machine will slow down and speed up depending on what um, kind of motion it's making. So I do have it set at, um, it's at a thousand stitches per minute. So it'll only stitch as fast as the machine, as the design will allow based on the movement. All right, now it's gonna finish up there. The next line isn't going to show this is the, um, the, the run line before the cut. And it's gonna cut to the inside of this. Now I could take it out and use my scissors and cut as well, but I like to show that you can do more than that. Now it's saying change to the black blade. So I'm gonna get my, my needles back over here and I'm gonna use my screwdriver and take this out. I'm also going to cut my thread, lock my thread at the top and cut it here and pull it out so it's not in the way because I'm done with thread and take the black one and stick it in. What's fun is that wavy, um, I probably should do a separate video of the wavy one and then have them speed it up for me. See if I can do a fast one because watching it cut those little waves was really fun. So I might do a little a littler one with that. Okay, so here goes, it's going to cut the black sections again. Now it's going through two layers of cork and that bit of stabilizer. And this is just a tear away. When it has that wavy layer, when it goes across, if those are sticking up, it will get caught. So you could put a final, I would put a topper possibly on there so you don't run your fingers, you know, trying to get in there. Because when it comes across, it could get caught on one of those. It's gonna go to the start of the blue and I'll put the blue in. There we go. Go and okay. Just make sure I didn't feel okay. Was it's gonna do the blue sections. And we can kind of, I don't know if you can see, it's just inside that stitch line. I'll back out again. After the blue, it's going to ask for the red. We have one more section, I think. Oh, no, asking for red. Okay. Here's the red. Here's that black one. There we go. Some, oh, there it is. Well, maybe if I could get it under there. There's always one, you know, that doesn't want to go in. There we go. All right, and okay, and start. Okay, it's got one more spot to do up there for the red. And we'll put the final green in. 
Now, because I'm cutting through two layers, I might have a little fuzzy stuff when I take it out. This, um, this cork has, a, you know, like a backing on it, like a fuzzy backing on it. So that will make a difference uh, when I remove it. Okay. And then the green. This is so smart. Tells me right what to do. There we go. Okay. Now these are my original blades that I got, I don't know how long ago when we started doing cut work. These are veneery blades and um, they were used in Italian factories. But they've gone to a different brand, a, a better price brand now. And it's done. And so on, on the CM17 and those machines that have, uh, can read the cut command with this, it says remove the needle, replace the hoop and needle plate, then clean bobbin, remove, remove and then clean bobbin holder and hook area. After cleaning bobbin holder and hook area, attach needle plate. So once I get done with this, I will go back and clean that. So what I'm gonna do is take this out of here. And then when I pop this up, I can see when I, as I pop it, there's a couple spots. So what I like to do is just put my scissor back under here and then just run it around to any of those little hairs that are holding it in. There we go. And then if it needs a little touch up, you can go back around and when I'm not on the camera, I can fix this, you know, very nice. There's a little thread right there too. There we go. So there I'm done. I have just that one lowest stitching unlike when I did this one I I had the two rows let me see here let me get this little thread and I didn't pull my bobbin threads up so I have the two rows here where here I have the one row and then here you can see the decorative stitch and that part you can put these in any you know more centered here if you want you could add you could add more things to it doesn't it's really up to you but I think that's really nice. And there we have it. I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way so you can see what they look like just like that. And then maybe I could find their little in, inner parts. Put that over there. And of course, let's put this up. At the beginning of this, I showed the numbers for the um, cut work needles. All right. All right, everyone. I'm going to turn the camera back on for me and I have to move a couple things. Let's see here. Let's go back to software for a minute while I move the camera and get my chair back. There we go. Someday I'm going to show you what it looks like when I'm filming. I've got camera and cords and chair and all kinds of stuff. So here we go. All right. Hopefully you like that and you're comfortable doing cut work at this point. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer any and all of them. I'll be back to do that. So thank you everyone for joining me. We'll see you again um, next the week. Yeah, next week is the last Thursday of the month and we're doing our zip pouch of the month number six. And this one's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm We've done a lot of techniques uh, with zippers and size, zippers and stuff. So we're going to stay with a flat zipper, but I'm going to show you some really fun things that you can create with your, your uh, zipper pouches. So enjoy everyone. We'll see you again soon.